All right, welcome everyone to Wellness Wednesdays. My name is Janelle, I'm co-founder of Mindful Nurses together with Claudia Wong. We're super happy to have this event and to welcome you today for this, this great session on Code Lavender, supporting staff spiritual well-being with Mirella Patelli. Uh, Mirella is a neurocritical care nurse and she has implemented this Code Lavender program in her unit and has shared the findings at a conference on neurocritical care nursing and she'll be sharing with us today about Code Lavender. What is it? Many of you maybe have never, if, like myself, maybe have never heard of this before. So you'll get to learn a little bit about what Code Lavender is. Um, benefits of this program, how can it be used, and then some practical tips on how you can in, in your setting. So this is a really great program to support staff well-being and support staff during times of trauma and, um, and difficult situations in the hospital so that um, all of us as nurses feel that we have uh, emotional and spiritual support when we're going through difficult times at work. So we're really happy to have this as part of the Mindful Nurses Wellness Wednesdays program. Happy to have you with us, Marella. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Cold Lavender. Uh, Cold Lavender is a rapid response program. Uh, it was uh, first developed by uh, Experience Innovation Network, which is part of Ocera, that and they have developed toolkits that they help organizations and hospitals to uh, implement Code Lavenders. The program is designed to support patients, families, physicians, nurses, and other staff member, members in stressful situations. Um, the history of how it started, it started, it started in Hawaii uh, and it was uh, actually um, the founder of Medtronic, Dr. Uh, Bacon, his last name, Earl Bacon. He started there like a patient lavender. Uh, he had this, um, this vision about creating um, a healthcare that did not take care only of uh, the medical part of the stuff, but also of the emotion, emotional and spiritual well-being. And Dr. Bridget Duffy then, uh, uh, as suggested by him, she took this and she brought this to Experience Innovation Network and she developed it and she has helped, uh, the organization has helped many, many other hospitals develop and implement these programs. So uh, Code Lavender, the team that uh, responds to Code Lavender usually is comprised of uh, pastoral care, like the chaplain, uh, integrative or wellness medicine, if there is in the hospital, nurses, usually holistic nurses, but staff nurses as well, palliative care, social worker, mental health professionals, and other supportive services that the organization has available. How it works. Um, you, Anyone in the hospital or in the healthcare facility can call a code lavender. It can be a patient, it can be a family member, it can be a staff member. They can call the code lavender on themselves or on someone else or a coworker or a patient or a family member. And then uh, once that is called and is put, uh, then the first responder or first responders arrive usually within 30 minutes, depends on how big the facility is and they um, provide support, which can be anything from comforting presence. Um, they can have like old lavender kits that include um, tea, aromatherapy, um, meditation. They can uh, do uh, offer massages, chair massages. They can have a space like a respite space in, in the facility where they can take a few minutes and, and then uh, they can also offer emotional support as well as recommend uh, other support services that the staff member or the family member can access later in, at, a second time, at a second time after this first cold lavender response. So what are some um, times and we can call a cold lavender? Can be the death of a patient, of course, always it's uh, it's good to call a code lavender if that's available. I would uh, like to quote here Dr. Duffy, who has said, in a perfect world, 
for every code blue called to resuscitate the heart and the lungs, there is a code lavender called directly after to resuscitate the mind, body, and spirit. And I really love this quote uh, from Dr. Duffy. Um, what other situations? Uh, a significant trauma, a code blue, uh, a stressful ethical dilemma in patient care, uh, if a staff, if a nurse has is having a very busy and overwhelming assignment and over a busy day, or if there has been a mistake or an error, um, if there has been any uh, issues with patients, families, difficult situations, a patient, um, or if there is like a difficult diagnosis that the patient has received. So there are many situations that a code lavender can be called. And it not, as I said, not necessarily you can call the code lavender on yourself. You can call a code lavender on a coworker when you see that they might need one. Now, what are the benefits? Um, it, it's important to understand that code lavender is going to look different, uh, differently in different organizations because every unit, every organization, every hospital is going to implement code lavender according to their needs, according to what the resources they already have. So, but their uh, general benefits that have been shown so far are increased nurses and physicians' well-being, as well as improved staff staff experience and patient and family experience. And uh, as a research has shown, low, low levels of clinical staff stress and burnout uh, are linked to reduced medical errors, reduced turnover, and increased patient satisfaction. Now, how to implement a code lavender? Um, the many organizations already, many hospitals have already some type of resources about resiliency, about uh, staff care that they have in place, such as pastoral care, uh, palliative care, integrative medicine, and employee mental health supportive services. So it is important that before you think about implementing Code Lavender, you identify those resources, first because you're gonna use those resources, um, and second because those teams are gonna be the teams that you're gonna need to work with, you're gonna need to collaborate in order to implement Code Lavender. And it's very important next step that you involve the stakeholders, leadership, uh, staff members, patients and families, supportive services, as I said, those services that already exist are in place and they can help you implement Code Lavender's program. But then the next step is to design the, the pilot program. So uh, again, we're talking about small thing, we're talking about implementing uh, a Code a Lavender pilot first in one unit, for example, or in your office where you work. Uh, it does not have to be, it, it cannot, it's not a good thing to think to implement it directly, let's say system-wise. It is good to start small and then you go from there. It is a uh, second, another important thing is data. What do you want to collect? What do you want to know about the, about what's the situation before and how the code lavender implementation is going to affect the staff well-being. So it's important like to come up, to come up with uh, some type of survey, some type of qual qualitative data to collect before and after. Decide when to use, like the things we said before, like when are we going to call a code lavender? What are the situations that are going to uh, be appropriate to call a code lavender? Create the team of, of first responders. It's important to uh, find people who are interested, find people who are motivated, find people who like to do uh, this type of thing and like to learn and help others. Map the workflow and develop and provide education. And finally, you test, you test the pilot. Uh, barriers. One of the most common, common barriers in the healthcare um, is that employees are reluctant to ask for help. And this is something that we saw as well in my unit. Uh, is, oh, I work in critical care, but everywhere nurses work, we know that it is really hard for nurses to um, to ask for help. And there is a culture out there that it's not okay to show weakness. It's not okay to, you know, to feel 
uh, overwhelmed or to show that you are overwhelmed. So how can we change the culture? Um, this is like something that implementing a code lavender pilot can help a lot and can teach us a lot. Our experience. So um, I first started uh, getting interested in uh, resiliency and burnout as a critical care nurse. I work in a very uh, stressful environment with neurocritical care patients. And I wanted to know more about uh, what can I do to be more resilient for myself and as well as uh, my coworkers. And I was surprised to learn from some research that I did that critical care nurses uh, do not come out of their profession. Either they leave because they retire or they move on to something else. They leave with the same amount of resiliency that they come in into the profession. And so it is important that we support nurses, support nurses to build those tools that are necessary for resiliency. Now, Code Lavender, it is not, it's a, it's a Band-Aid fix. It's something that helps in the moment. It's something that the code, it's gonna help right now in the stressful situation, but there are other things that are gonna be needed in the long term to help with uh, staff resiliency. So what we did, we did our pilot uh, only in our unit and we focused only on staff, on nurses. So uh, other organizations uh, have implemented code lavenders, not only for uh, nurses, but as well for patients and for families. In our case, we decided that we were going to implement it only for the nurses. So we created a team uh, with nurses and we had the chaplain, which was a very important part of the team. And um, the first, the most important thing in the beginning was leadership buy-in. And I'm saying this because it's very important to have leadership buy-in, not only because of the financial implications, what, what are your resources, what are you gonna use, but as well as because leadership buy-in, when the leadership is interested and it's invested in, um, in improving resilience and in improving care uh, for the staff, then the staff is gonna be more willing to participate and uh, it's gonna help with those barriers that I already talked about, about the, those barriers about uh, people not being willing to kind of ask for help. So leadership buy-in is very important. We did a staff burnout survey prior to starting the pilot. And then uh, we, so because we wanted to gauge like what was the burnout, how was the feel uh, for, uh, of our nurses in the unit. Then we enlisted first responders and we mapped out our workflow. We did use um, the, uh, the Vocera uh, pilot, but we also uh, adapted it to our needs in the unit. And then we uh, did an education. We educated the first responders. So we prepared the education in conjunction with the chaplain, the unit chaplain. And the education was um, a combination of psychological first aid uh, instruction, as well as uh, education on uh, mindfulness, on active listening, of empathy, on how to be present and what to do and what not to do, like how to help someone. Uh, in a stressful situation. Uh, then we ran a six month pilot, uh, which after that we did a post pilot survey, pilot survey and uh, we, uh, as uh, Janelle mentioned, we presented, the team presented uh, a poster at the AAWN conference. So we found at the end, uh, after the survey, that 75% of respondents, they wanted to see Code Lavender as a permanent program in the unit. And there was, um, we noticed an increased awareness of the need for self-care. And as well, it was very important because uh, as a team and then as the leadership as well, uh, we identified opportunities to improve resiliency and retention. So what happened is that during uh, implementing Code Lavenders and um, we uh, noticed that we were being more there for each other. Things like it, it didn't have to be a, um, 
like a standardized intervention. It was just like, I'm noticing that you have, you need, uh, you're having a busy day, you are overwhelmed, you're having lots to do. What can I do for you? How can I help you? How can I be here for you? It, be it either uh, I'm going to watch your patient, you can take a walk, or you can go grab coffee, or I am uh, going to listen to you for a few minutes and you can vent. Uh, those things that kind of make us aware of each other's needs. And um, it, it, it was really good and helped. Now, again, the barriers are still there and there is like uh, a lot of... Um, a lot of reluctance from the staff for, again, uh, to accept or to ask for help or even to recognize. And that, that is, I uh, find that one of our main issues as nurses that we have a hard time first recognizing that we are in a very stressful situation and we need help and then uh, be able to ask for help. Um, Another issue is that nurses have a hard time getting away, like especially critical care nurses. If you are really busy and you're taking care of your patient who's really sick, then you will not want to go away and you, you will not want to just leave the bedside. That's how we're all, that's how we work. So, however, um, Code Lavender's implementation uh, is very important to increase this overall awareness of the staff, of the leadership, of uh, everybody in healthcare about the need for self-care. We, in uh, my organization, we are very lucky to have um, many, um, to have many other resources that we could provide to nurses afterwards. Like we have a very good employee assistance program, uh, chaplain services that we can provide. And also we had a collaboration of uh, leadership to be like, do you need to take a day off or scheduling helps or things like that, that could help uh, in the long term after a code lavender was uh, presented. So yeah, a code lavender, again, it is not a fix. It is a band-aid. It is a rapid response that can help right in the moment when a stressful situation has happened or is still happening. Thank you, Marilla. Thank you so much. This is really uh, interesting and important information. Um, yeah, I can really relate to this. I used to work in emergency rooms. I, I really relate to what you shared about as nurses, we just have a hard time asking for help and showing, I guess, in our minds what feels like a weakness in asking for help or thinking that we need emotional support. And um, yeah, and at the time when I was working in the emergency room, I don't know if Code Lavender, I don't think Code Lavender existed in my hospital, or at least if it did, I wasn't aware of it. And I just wasn't aware that things like emotional and spiritual support were even available for, for me as a nurse. So I really appreciate what you're doing with this work. And just like you said, just raising awareness among nurses that uh, these resources are available and that our own emotional needs are important, even if it's just something as simple as among the nursing staff, us being more aware of supporting one another in small ways. Um, we're asking one another how we're doing and how we can help each other. I think that's a really um, beautiful outcome of this work. And um, yeah, I also appreciate what you said about this is a response, but maybe there's more that needs to be done as well around uh, prevention. And um, I'm wondering if you have any insights from your experience and in, in what programs could, maybe you have ideas of something you want to create that complements the Code Lavender response to bring more prevention. Um, I, yes, I do. That. Yeah, I think um, what, it, the culture is changing. It's slow, but it's changing. So it, years ago, we would not be seeing like, uh, in my hospital, we have a couple of units have like a respite or a respite room, like where you can go in and uh, you can spend a few minutes, you can meditate, you can um, 
you know, there is a massage chair, stuff like that. And there are things that are available now. And there is like so much more. I feel like uh, uh, upper management is being in more organizations. They're, they are being more interested in um, in staff health, in staff wellness, uh, spiritual and emotional wellness. Uh, so there is like the culture is changing. What we, we can do more, I feel... Uh, to build, to give nurses tools, how they can um, build up resiliency and how they can be better at those situations that then would require cold lavender. And I, I have ideas. I don't know like how feasible or how, how they're, it's going to work, but what you are doing with mindful nurses, it's an amazing, amazing thing, because this is something I find very important. Uh, when we need to teach nurses to be, to be mindful, we need to teach nurses. It is very important to take care of themselves, not only take care of themselves physically and emotionally and spiritually as, as well. And we do like I, I've seen in my organizations, we offer uh, meditations weekly. We offer, there are things that we can do more. Uh, yeah, because I find that again, this code lavender is a, a quick fix, but it is so much more important. And we need to start having conversations about how we help uh, healthcare workers to build resilience in the long term. Thank you. Uh, really beautiful work you're doing and thank you for sharing it with us and with uh, the mindfulness community and hopefully, yeah, more, more nurses, um, as you said, will become uh, more aware of these resources and uh, maybe more Code Lavender programs will start to pop up in different hospitals and more support for nurses, emotional and spiritual health will, will be there. It's definitely becoming more in uh, common awareness and more popular, as you said. So we're really happy to have you sharing this with us. And we'll be posting um, this presentation on the Mindful Nurses Facebook page and also on the website, www.mindfulnurses.net. And um, we'll also share Marilla's contact information. If you have any follow-up questions for her, uh, you can reach out to her individually as well. So thank you all for, for listening and thank you Marella for sharing with us. We really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. Have a beautiful evening. You too. Thank you. Bye.